Daisy Bell, a bicycle built for two, um, has the honor of being the first piece of music sung by a computer. Here's a little bit of what that recording sounds like. Daisy Bell was also used in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, and this piece was sung by, uh, spoiler alert, Hal the computer um, as he's dying and he's having his memory banks removed. I like to use this piece, Daisy Bell, as a way to get even more comfortable using large amounts of bow, hopefully whole bows, and uh, singing notes in slurs. Um, the word legato means very connected, and we're going to play all of the notes in this piece in a very connected legato way. Unlike many of our other pieces, Daisy Bell is in 3-4 time, which means that there are three beats per measure, and the quarter note is the beat. All of the dotted half notes in this piece are three beats long, and all of the quarter notes in this piece are still only one beat long. This piece also has a repeat, as well as a first and second ending. So what's going to happen is that when you get to measure 15, the first ending, you'll play through the first ending, and then go back to the beginning of the piece. When you get to measure 15 again, you'll skip everything uh, indicated under the first ending, and you'll take the second ending. This way we can save a lot of paper and ink, um, and this is probably the most efficient way to write a piece of music like Daisy, where most of the music repeats. So let's think about bow distribution for a little bit. Um, so if I'm playing at 80 equals the quarter note, and my first note is three beats long, slurred to my second note, which is three beats long, why don't I divide an even amount of space for each note? Half of a bow for each note. And of course, the third and fourth measures should work the same way. So in measures 5, 6, and 7, where we have only one slur, only one bow per measure, let's divide the notes accordingly. So in Daisy Bell, we'll have to move the bow a little bit more slowly for slurs that occur over two measures, and we'll have to move the bow twice as fast for slurs that occur over one measure. You may have to be sensitive with the amount of bow weight you're using in the one measure long slurs or else those measures might become accented. Yeah, that's certainly not what we want. We want a pretty even and constant sound throughout the piece. For both hands, measures 11 and 12 offer a special difficulty, which is that we're changing the bow from the A string to the D string, and we should find a way to make that connection very smooth and uninterrupted. So there in the left hand, we can think about leaving both the first and third fingers down on the string. so. but not
not letting the first finger fly off unnecessarily. Now, with the bow, we also want to be careful not to change strings in a very abrupt, jagged way. No, that won't do it. Um, what I would recommend is going from the B to a double stop and the G. That's a very legato, smooth string change. 